Where did you get the insight to start Pearl and Coots? I was approached by a very good friend of mine who worked for a, for a firm of estate agents and he came to me and said, let's open up our own agency. And I had no idea whatsoever. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know anything about property at all. Without any experience at all, we had 75 pounds each that we put into a kitty and we took this shop in Clarence Road. And that was my experience, four Saturday mornings and that, that was it. And then we just opened our doors. We didn't have any property. We didn't have anything. Nothing whatsoever. We had a desk and a table and we had a phone. We didn't have a car to take people to show them play. We didn't have anything. And we just opened up. Did you ever have a mentor or role model? And if so, who and why? I must have been 20 or 20 at the time. And somebody came in and wanted to sell a house very, very quickly. And I knew that it was the right price. And what I did, I approached one of the people that we manage properties for, and I said to him, look, I can buy this for a certain price. I know we can sell it for more once we've done some work to it. And he put up all the money. I put up the expertise, and I did all the work. I had two things on my side at the time. Youth and enthusiasm. And then we bought it, I did it up, we sold it, made a good profit. And uh, he became one of my, it wasn't one of your mentors, just, just one of my my partners that I did property with. Why did you leave school? Has having no qualifications affected your life or been a hindrance? I left school when I was 15 because that's what we did. We did as we were told and everybody left at 15 and I left at 15 and there was no point staying on or doing anything more because I had nothing. I had no qualifications whatsoever. Has it been a hindrance? This man worked in a church and after 20 years working in the church, they found out that he couldn't read or write. And they said to him, you know, if you can't read or write, you can't work in the church. And they got rid of him. So he had nothing. To, so what he did, he went out into the street and he started buying and selling things. And, he, and in five or six years, he, he amassed this fortune of money, buying and selling whatever he was doing. And he was interviewed by a newspaper. And they said, my God, you know, for a man who can't read or write, you've made a fortune, you've done wonderfully, where would you have been today if you could read or write? And he said, I'll still be working in the church. You know, yeah. does that make any sense to you? Yeah. You know, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, you are better off with an education. I was lucky, I made it without an education, but you know, if I had a maybe, maybe I would have done, maybe I'd have done better, oh no, better than I've done, I've done all right, you know. What motivates you? Well, I must tell you, it's interesting. I've always been really motivated. I would be up at four o'clock in the morning. I'd be at work at five. I couldn't wait to get going. I would work till I didn't have any energy left. Just completely, all my, all my energy went. I used to work at night in a gambling club. I worked as a croupier in a gambling club for about three years. I was working all day and all night. This went on for a couple of years. Just wanted to succeed. I had this, this real ambition to succeed because I come from a very humble background and I think when you come from a humble background and you see that your mum's run out of money on a Wednesday night and my dad's not getting paid till Friday you know the idea of having some money in your pocket really it's, it's, a, it's got a lot of incentive. If you could do it all over again would you change anything? Would I change anything if I could start again? I would still do I suppose I'd still do the same thing you know I've got property property running through my veins it's all I know I've tried other things, um, not really successfully. I've only did it half-heartedly. I'm trying one or two new things at the moment. I've just built what's called a data centre, and I've opened up some gyms, and I've got an insurance brokerage. I'm just trying different things, but mainly it, I, I'm a property man, and these are all based on property anyway, because I'm using buildings that I own, and just doing other things, other, rather than just letting them, just using different things, using them for different reasons. What are the most important lessons you have learned as a result of your success? You have to have good relationships with people. If you've got people around you, 
and you're honest with them, it, it will always pay dividends for you. You need other people. You can't do anything on your own. You have to have people. Of course, as I said before, you've got to know what you're doing. You've got to be, you've got to have the, ex you've got to know your, whatever business you're in, you've got to understand it, but you need other people. You can't live on your own. What key tips would you give to young people looking for work or looking to start their own enterprise? My advice to you guys would be to go into something that interests you, whether it's computers, whether it's building, whatever it is, as a kid, and go in there and learn about that business. Learn as much as you possibly can. You can work there for two, three years and watch everything that goes on, but you must learn all the time. Money is not important. Learning is important. And then, if you want to go down the route that I went down, you've then got to take that big step about going on your own. You mustn't worry about a regular wage, it's not important. And you've got to pick the, the thing that you want and give it everything. I did that with, with property. I mean, you can do that with technology, you can do it with building, what you can do it with anything. But you've got to have a passion for it and you've got to give it everything. What sort of skills and personalities do you need uh, to lead a business? Attention to detail. You've got to pick the right people to have around you. If you get the wrong people, you haven't got a chance. You've got to, you've got to find the right people and you have to pay them the right amount of money. Um, um, you've got to learn, you have to learn how to delegate. You've got to give people responsibility. Uh, you've got to let them make their own decisions. Even though I've got the final say with everything, you have to, you have to let them do their own thing because they'll lose motivation. Um, I think the art of delegation is one of the most important things. You've got to delegate properly. I wasn't good at delegation at the beginning. I was frightened to delegate. I wanted to do everything myself. But now I can't do everything myself. It's something you learn as you get a bit older. The unemployment rate for 18 to 24 year olds is the highest it's ever been. How do you believe we can fix this problem? There are opportunities out there. There, there really are opportunities, but you've got to be able to see them. I see opportunities. Maybe, well, perhaps that's why I'm an entrepreneur and other people don't.